hello again, and welcome to Just Another Magic Podcast, episode M plus one, where M was the last episode. Um, <laughs> I don't know what the last episode was. This is our first time recording in over two months. Um, I do apologize. Uh, the former co-host, Jacob, has told me that he's quitting magic. I've not seen him for months, and I spoke with him uh, last month, so... We were trying to find a uh, another co-host for the show, as it seems, and uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to find a bunch of people and uh, see which one is the best and wants to be on the show. Uh, we're here to talk about some Theros pre-releases, crack a pack, but we should first off have our uh, co-host introduce himself. Okay, um, well, I guess it was my mark. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, I guess tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from. Well, my name is uh, Jörg. <laughs> I, I know it uh, sounds like, uh, sounds a little bit weird, but I'm actually from Germany, so um, it's not weird here. Uh, I play Magic since 1994, 1995, fourth edition. Um, stopped a while ago because I never found someone in my direct uh, n- neighborhood uh, to play with and started uh, with Mirrodin uh, block again uh, and played pre-release, release, QPs, uh, Grand Prix, everything. Uh, I play mostly um, sealed events. I like them very much. Uh, I like to draft uh, and um, uh, play standard. So I hope my experience is okay for the audience. Also, um, a good deck brewer. He is going to be brewing the deck that I play in the top eight of the Hipsters of the Coast Standard Popper event, which uh, I just went 6-0 yesterday, for those of you listening. So I'm very excited about going 6-0 in that. And... Um, so he's going to be brewing the deck for post-rotation. The top eight is going to be standard popper with Theros and without Innistrad, so I cannot continue playing the Mono Blue Flyers deck that I talked about. Uh, why I actually that? have some ideas for uh, the standard popper, so but I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not going to share them right now. <laughs> yeah, we do have a lot to talk about this show. Theros came out for better or for worse. I am leaning towards the for worse. Well, actually, I like it, to be honest. I am not a huge fan of Theros. Um, I like the flavor. It's very nice. Uh, it's better than the Chinese or the Japanese arts, and I like it. Well, Kamigawa is widely regarded as a bad set, so... Well, I I, I played a lot Kamigawa. <laughs> um... Actually, I ha- went to, uh, through my cards uh, this week uh, and uh, got a whole bunch of Sendikal block, Kamigawa block uh, cards, and uh, all the not-so-good sets, I guess. <laughs> well, Zendikar was a great set. Fetchlands running 50 60 $70 even. Yeah, I, I don't know. I didn't know that. Uh, I I traded them uh, at the time Zenikar was uh, uh, legal for like five euros. Uh, yep, that's uh, so, that's what I was doing too. Um, I was doing so, magic back then. I wasn't even playing during Zendikar, but when I had my fetch lands, I was just trading them. You know, they're five, six dollars, and then they slowly get up to ten. And then I, Actually, when I was I have my mine. modern deck, I was saying, well, I need to get Arid Mesas, but am I really willing to spend $10 in Arid Mesa? Now I believe they're up to 35 each. I wish I had spent the $10 for an Arid Mesa. I mean, it was $10 for an Arid Mesa, 15 for a Scalding Tarn. It if was... you would uh, be my neighbor, I can borrow you my... Fetchlands, I've got uh, the Misty Rainforest placer. Uh, well, the got... song was banned, so it's kind of useless at this point in time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, but I do still play Storm to absolutely zero. <sighs> Storm is fun. I love Storm. Storm is a lot uh, fun. Turn, turn three, uh, ten tokens. Yeah. It's just GG. 
I don't play empty in the main board. Um, I just play grape shot in the main board. You know me. I play my one of. You do. You do. I run it as a one of in the sideboard. So. I um it, it, I like it uh, because um I'm testing uh, while I'm playing if if it's good or not. Um, does the MT do his, uh, the job or not, and, and such st and things. And um, most of the time, if you turn three, ten tokens uh, with, my, uh, with my Stormbrew, um, it's pretty much GG. Um, only got hit once by a Thron uh, oh. deck who um, ripped the uh, Pyroclasm after cycling four cards turn f uh, uh Till turn, uh, till he ripped uh, the chasm. So, ouch! All right. Well, we drifted extremely off topic. Yeah. Um, okay. But I, I guess at that, but we did drift extremely off topic. So we'll get into our Theros crack a pack. Okay. I have strapped started. Theros. Uh, actually, not uh, now. I'm, but I'm go going to. Um, we ordered already some uh, displays. And if I'm going to meet up with my friends uh, in some weeks, uh, we're going to draft a uh, private. And I guess four, four, four displays or something like that in a weekend. So it's going to be hardcore playing Magic. And then uh, Theros comes to Magic Online for the pre-release events a week two weeks? from... To, I don't know. Let me two ask weeks. that one. Seven store? I thought it was just next weekend. Uh, next downtime, excuse me. Next downtime? Well, uh, the client says it. Oh, the client says it? Oh. Yeah, uh, let's let me see. check. Um, I just... Uh, hmm. I guess... There are those drafts. Oh, October 4th, so right now we're sitting oh, at September okay. 29th, so it does come out this week. Wow, very That's fast. Good. Indeed. Very surprised. Um, I won't be doing pre-release drafts. No, no, no. They have a, such a negative EV. But a friend of mine has actually given some pretty reasonable... Um, evidence to show they don't have such a negative EV because all of the cards are X amount higher in price. Um, well, bad cards will stay bad. They don't want to. Exactly, but if you're getting, like, what's the five mana 4-4 four, four with pro red from... Um, the dragon. No, 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 from uh, uh, Dragon's Maze. Ah, I know. The terrible um, one. Uh... Um, yeah, I know what you mean, but I, I don't know. Maze. I think I have one on Magic Online. But anyway, I don't know. Uh, that card... <laughs> no, I don't have any. That card was running around three tickets in, a, in the pre-release draft, and now you would be happy to get, like, ten cents for it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Magic Online froze. That's not unusual, so I guess we're not getting that, bright, uh, that uh, card. You mean you mean the uh, the daily froze? Uh, Lavinia of the tenth. That was the card. Also, ah, okay. Council of the Absolute was seven tickets. Now it's less than a quarter. So definitely a good magic card. A good well, a, a a thing that's possible. But I will not well, do pre-release drafts unless someone convinces me. That they're good value. Well, well to, 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 to be honest, um, I think bad cards are gonna stay bad. There are uh, there are some exceptions like you you just said, but most of the time nobody wants the cards. Well, so, I, I think a lot of people will be buying the cards incorrectly, but okay, they'll be buying them. Um, I don't know. I don't uh, I don't see bad. so much yeah. value in uh, in uh, Theros. I agree there's not much value in Theros. I think people are going to overvalue the gods at first and yes. uh, overvalue the Skylands at first. Well, actually, I guess the Skylands uh, are only Guildgates 2.0. Exactly. So They're just slightly better than Guildgates. But to be honest, um uh in Germany you can get them for 
like two euro, two point five euros. It means it's running it's a lot higher than that here. Um, five dollars or something in like America, that. In America, it's running around five to six dollars on uh, yeah. major websites like um, Star City. To be honest, I'm I I think um, they gonna be a bit higher. I guess seven dollars to ten dollars uh, will the price be? Well, we can we can do our financial show another <laughs> day or at some point, but we should really get to this crack a pack. We okay, can, uh, let's crack a pack. Or, oh, it doesn't this new program doesn't show me how long, but for ten fifteen minutes on this topic. So crack a pack, um, yoked ox. And since this is a new set, I'll be reading all the cards. For a white mana, it's an 04. Well, I think the merit it has is that it's an ox, and that's about yeah. it. Uh, uh, I, I guess um, uh, there was a, a similar card like this uh, in blue, the Kraken uh, Hatchling. Hatchling. But in yeah. so it's a defensive deck, usually white, you're throwing out a bunch of creatures and attacking. And the ox is not so nice. It has um, a good uh, body, uh, to be honest. Um, it, 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 it stalls all the 2-2s two and 1-3s uh, and 3-2s and 3-3s, three threes, but it's not that uh, interesting in white. If it would, it would be in blue, it would be slightly better. But not to pick very highly. Right, and um, I don't think I'm ever playing him. So next we have the Guardians of Mel, Mel, Melitus, uh, Guardians of Meltalar, three for an OC defender. <laughs> um, three mana for an 6 defender, artifact creature golem. Terrible, or just bad? Uh, I guess horrid bad. I don't I mean, know. It's just not great. Very bad. I actually, actually, I would uh, uh, play the Ox over the Melitus, Guardian of the Melitus. I would, too. Um, definitely. Ju my my suggestion, just don't pick it and ship it. Exactly. Um, a friend of mine, when I was drafting, would that be Dragon's Maze? He, he got a last pick, six mana, destroy a land at random or destroy an artifact, you get a 1-1 one, one goblin. And he just took that card's last pick and tore it into shreds and threw it across the room. <laughs> and that's what you do when you get this card. Um, yeah. That's that's exactly what you do. So If they, uh, they remove the defender from it, it would be a, a really good card, to be honest. Is uh, zero six it, for three? Yes, um, because you can pump it. And you can you can um, attack with it. So, I uh, not a really good card, a uh, okayish card uh, who needs pump. But um, you have the the enchantments in black like plus one plus o oh, and draw a card or something like that, or the green uh, flash enchantment plus two plus two. Um, so you actually can build your own Voltron with this guy. I know not so good, but at least it has six uh, uh, toughness, and, uh, and that's what you want. You want big toughness, guys. Right. Okay, next card. Boy, you're actually um, you're trying to get through the cards instead of sitting rambling. Okay. Oh. Uh, next we have the Traveler's Amulet. So it is a reprint from Innistrad for a colorless. It is an artifact, and you can pay a colorless and sack it to grab a land. I love it. I am a really huge fan of that card. I love it. Um, actually, uh, it's it's now personal. Um, uh, uh, stuff from the pre from the release uh, uh, yesterday. Um, I played this card over one three creature human cleric gain to life heroic. I don't know, Satan Battle Priest, I guess uh, it's the name. Um, it was such a good swap, and every time I drew the Traveler's Amulet, I was so happy I had it in my uh, in my deck. It is such an amazing card. You can um, just uh, play one land less, or you can play the 17 land Traveler's Amulet deck with no 
problem for splashing. It's such a great card. Every time you can, it's really, really good. I like it. I would really pick this one. It's it's just a great card. Uh, you're definitely not first picking it though. No, 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 right. not first picking, but um, like fourth, fifth, sixth pack pick or something like that. Um, it's it can easily fix you. Uh, you can. There are cards you want to to play uh, with a one-off or. The amulet is just good. So, uh, just for our audience, um, I know our audience is going to be very happy this show because I barely got a word in, which is good. Um, <laughs> I don't know if I'm the most liked person on the show. Uh, well, I'm sorry if I'm talking Oh, no, I, I actually do appreciate it. Our listeners do, too, trust me. <laughs> Well, okay. <laughs> All right. Um, next we have the Satessin Griffin, four and a white, three, two flying. Pay two GG to give it plus two, plus two until end of turn, and you can activate that ability only once per turn. I like this card. Sh uh, well, I should be honest, I don't like this card. You don't? I don't like this card. I, ha I opened it uh, in my... Uh, pool three times and I did not play it. Really? Um, uh, I, yes. I was playing, uh, spoiler alert for later in the show, I was playing white green at my pre-release. I Me really too. wanted one of these cards. Me too, but to be honest, um, there are so uh, much better cards in the five uh, converted mana cost area. You just don't want to uh, spend your turn Pulling a 3-2 flyer with uh, no abilities, this turn you spend it uh, on the board. You have uh, such other cards you want to play at this, uh, at this point. Um, if you are facing a flyer deck and you need a blocker, it's okay, it's decent. Um, you can play it maybe once, but I don't think it's such a great card. If you don't play green with it, it's just a 5 mana, 3-2 three, three, flying. In it. which case, it passes the vanilla test, but not by much. Uh, yeah. It's, 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 it's just uh, but not on so the good. Attack, you're getting in for 5 damage a turn. Well, um, kill quickly. For, for the cost of not uh, playing uh, another card, uh, not developing your board. I don't I don't like it very much, to be honest. I don't know. Thera seems like a slow format, so. Yeah, and everybody runs the the, re, the Reach guys, uh, so the Asp or something like this. Right. All right, so we have the Portent of Betrayal, three and a red for an act of treason with Scry 1. I like that card a lot. Well, it's uh, it's a uh, uh, threaten. Um, so it's threaten with Scry One, which in cases of the late game um, can essentially be draw a card if there's a land on top. Yeah, yeah. Scry uh, ability is like uh, drawing one half of a card. Um, so now, in my pre-release deck, which I only played in one pre-release and no release events, I had no Scry, and I was very disappointed. But whenever my opponent Scry. <laughs> I cringed, but then again, I also um, went 4-0 and didn't lose a game the whole day, so maybe scrying is not the way to go in the format? Um, well, it's it's okay. Um, Magma Jet is one of the greatest removals ever printed uh, so far. Magma Jet um, is the instant speed bear kill with scry, too. So. Yeah. Uh, but um, this one is... Uh, um, no, not so good, I, I guess, uh, the, the, the scry ability, because if you are gonna, gonna threaten a creature, um, uh, uh, you want to end the, the turn, so, what does the scry t do to you? Yeah, well, um, okay, let's see, I've got a land, but your opponent is dead. Um, it's not, so, uh, not so cool, I don't know, don't know how to say it. It's, it's okay, um, it's just as good as an, as an act of treason was in Gate Crash. It finishes out the game, but yeah. it can also just be a dead card in hand. Yeah. All right. Um, that I guess. Uh, but, uh, I, uh, I guess um, there was another uh, 
card um, that made uh, the creature plus two plus zero for the that would be the same amount instinct, and I think the plus two plus zero is better than the yeah I one yeah definitely so um, I guess it's just uh, to be slightly better than an act of treason, um, but most of the time it's act it's better than act of like. treason and worse than traitorous instinct. And, yeah. uh, in an aggressive deck, it'll win you games, and in a controlling deck, it will be a dead card in hand. Yeah. yeah. But a one-off is, is nice to have. If you are a, a, an a, a aggressive deck and uh, can uh, benefit from it. so Indeed. Maybe it's good. It, it's it's uh, you you must consider how how good it is in your deck. You have to is it work, does it work with your whole uh, deck plan and and uh, strategy um, for what you're gonna achieve with your deck. And I don't think it's so uh, such a good card. It's okay. You can it can, it can win you the game. All right, well, it looks like we're going to be getting a good card next, and that is the Nimbus Nyad, two and a blue, two, two flyer, and he bestows four, four and a blue, so he gives plus two, plus two, and flying. So it's a Windrake with upside. Absolutely. Um, this card yeah. is insane. Yes. I got I, the, I, uh, the Leaf Crown dry, Dryad and the... Um, Oh, I guess I didn't get the white one in my sealed pool, and the green one was insane, so I can only imagine how insane flying is. Uh, it's it's just a good one. Um, the Dimbus Nyad is really, really nice. Um, if you need a Windrake, you can play it as a Windrake. If not, um, it's just a, a really, really good card. It essentially kills a creature, and then you get a Windrake. Yeah. Which yeah. is fine. Uh, well, I guess we haven't gone over mechanics on the show, but this is a week after the pre-release for our listeners, so they should know how Bestow works and um, Scry and Devotion and Monstrosity, etc. I don't see any other mechanics in the pack. Oh, Heroic. Heroic. Uh, Rage of Furferos, four and a red for a sorcery, and it deals four damage to target creature. It can't be regenerated. Scry one. I don't like this card too much. It's um, it's bad removal. If it hit players, it would be okay, because then at least you have something you can do with it. Well, um, it, but uh, it is removal, and the set is not full of it. That's um, true. It, it deals four damage to a creature, which um, which in most cases kills it, kills it. Um, and the upside of it, uh, the downside of it is it's a sorcery, and um, it's not an instant. But at least it is removal, to be honest. And and uh, you play removal in every deck. You need removal in your decks. Right. I would I wouldn't uh, uh, pick it very very high, but um, it's okay. It's decent. Um, it at least kills something you might want to get rid of. I agree. Um, did you play this in any of your decks this weekend? Nope. No. Nope. Um, uh, the in in the release I played uh, green white. Um, and in the uh, in the pre-release, I played uh, blue, uh, black, um, and my dis the, my pack was green. I I had uh, been handed out, so you know how bad my pool was in the pre-release. Yes, uh, yes, we did discuss that for a while. When you open uh, your playset Athusas in your uh, six boosters, you know how bad your pool is. <laughs> Indeed. All right, so next we have the Asphodel Wanderer. For a black, it's a 1-1, one, one, and for two and a black, he regenerates. Well, um, regeneration creatures are always good blockers, um, but... I don't like it. 
Uh, uh, no, it's from, a one from, mana one one with slight upside. Yeah. Nothing more, nothing less. Uh, it's a defensive creature, uh, but a three mana regenerate a guy is re- very, very expensive. The most uh, regenerations you you faced in the past was like one black, one white, uh, one one colorless, one black, or something like that. It's very, very expensive to to regenerate that guy. Right. Uh, all right. So next we have the Flesh Mad Steed, one and a black for a two two, and whenever another creature dies, tap it. Tap uh, this card. Excuse me. That's terrible. I mean, the set is full of bears and then high drops, but really, this isn't even good. Well, actually, it's not that bad. It's 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 a bear, and nothing else. It's a bear with downside. Yeah, I know, but um, it comes into play as a bear and serves as a, as a jump walker or something like that. It it's it's a bear with downside. You said it. It's. It can be situational, uh, okay, but uh, at least it's a bear, so it can't be that bad. Exactly, but I mean it. Uh, it has downside. I don't think bears yeah. are too good in this set unless you're playing an aggressive deck. No, no. Uh, I guess we 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 are, we are coming to the power toughness uh, discussion later. Um, All right. So, uh, it's just a bear, and I don't play bears in this format. Or I try to avoid them. I, I, I want to have, um, something on my creatures like, uh, the, the, uh, Nimbus I mean, Nyad. You, you Nimbus. saw my pre release deck, it was full of bears and less. Yeah, but, but you, they all had, uh, I guess, uh, some upside on it, like the Nimbus Nyad and uh, the Wonder... Uh, I mean, I was even playing a traveling philosopher. I was so aggressive. I mean, we'll get to that discussion in a bit. But. Yeah. All right, next we have Ray of Dissolution. So for two and a white, it's an instant. Destroy target enchantment. You gain three life. I love this card. 100% agree it's removal. It's nothing else as than removal. So, I often two for one uh, my opponent with the ray of this solution. Um, it's such a, a good card. It's removal. Nothing else to uh, say about it. It's also creature removal for some of the yeah. really good enchantment creatures like um, Heliod's Emissary? Yeah, it's removal for creatures and uh, like artifact can never hurt. The the artifacts, like the spear uh, of uh, the gods and, and something like that, or the hammer of Pulpos. Right. Hammer of Furphoros. Yeah. All right, so next we're into the uncommons. We have Sea Lock Monster, three blue blue for a 5-5. Five five. That flies by the van- vanilla test for blue. And it cannot attack unless defendant player controls an island. Ugh, that seems terrible, right? Well, it's a f- five mana, five five. But it can't attack unless defending player controls an island. And this is not a set like Dragon's Maze where everyone is playing all the colors. But but you are but gonna. It has five blue blue monstrosity three. Yeah. Becomes monstrous target land becomes an island. Yeah, that's what I want to say. Yes. So you it's you change. It's great, but it's not terrible. Yeah, it's not terrible. It's not that great, but it's okay. Um, you can play it, uh, and if it's monstrous, um, your opponent needs to answer it. Exactly. Um, it's an eight-eight, but that's seven mana you're pumping into the monstrosity. How how often do games last till turn seven in your experience? Very, very long. Uh, very uh, often. Usually I have won by turn 7 or turn 8 with the deck that I played, so I don't know. I think it'll be good at um, the control matchup, but... Well, um, I, I, uh, I'm talking about the release uh, uh, exp- uh, experience I gained. Um, 
I went down to four, four life and um, won the match uh, at the end um, with uh, 62 lives. Wow. Uh, so um, attacking with a 14-14 lifelink uh, is uh, really insane. I would agree. Uh, next we have Nylea's Emissary for three and a green. It's a three three trample and it bestows for five and a green. So that would give it plus three plus three and trample. I like this card a lot. Four mana three three with trample is fine in this format. Slightly ahead of the curve, dare I say. Um, I must find the card in just a moment. Three and a green for a three three with trample. Ah, uh, yeah, I, uh, I, I, I want to visualize the card, so, um, Oh, it's a nice card. For my, uh, yeah, I, I li it's it's a very good card to to be honest. Um, uh, the best me mechanic is nice, uh, and the, the the cost is not too over uh, priced. It's okay. It's fine. It's decent. Decent. That that was the, exactly the word. Um, it's good. Not great. Just average. Yeah. It's okay, um, but uh, the bestow mechanic makes it uh, so much better. It's it's a uh, uh, um, armored uh, elephant or something like that um, with an upside. Exactly. I think it's an insane card. I'm always happy to see one of them. Um, yeah. All right. So next. Oh wait. Before we get to the rare that I'm very excited to talk about. Um, we have Mogus's Marauder, two and a black, two two, and when he ETBs up to X target creatures get intimidate and haste until end of turn where X is your devotion to black. So essentially what that means is he is a three mana two two with haste and intimidate until end of turn. And he could win a game. I love this card. He is such a great card. As you said, he can win games uh he breaks stalls. Um, great card. Indeed. Because uh, even if uh, if, if uh, it's just a three mana two two that uh, also shocks them, that's fine in the yeah, early game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but even if uh, he, he enters the battlefield, you don't need to target himself. You can target another creature you want to. So it is just a good card. Indeed it is. All right, so our rare, um, Foxies. For a single black mana, target player reveals his or her hand. You choose a non-land card from it. That player discards that card. You get you lose two life. So, um, so that's a $30 card. Yeah. And so it, you just snap take it. Yeah, definitely. Uh, because, and it's my nemesis. <laughs> yeah, now you're going to uh, ask me why. Um, uh, I wasn't actually, but continue. <laughs> we uh, we we opened like um, eight to ten displays uh, of the set. Forties was in uh, the first time, and we opened one. Wow. We um, I'm 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 talking about we because um, some friends of mine and we share cards and build decks together and hang out together and so we put our pools together card pools and build the decks out of it and we opened uh, like one or two and so we couldn't play decks with thoughtsies and. So it was easy to not play Sorties because we don't have had them, and um, never seen well, in the booster. It's an it's a great card. It's seen uh, play in modern right now. Um, just snap take it. Uh, and be happy that your draft was paid. Now for. day two of a GP. So what do you pick? Day two of a GP. I'm I'm seriously considering the Nylea's emissary. Thoughtsees is a fine card in limited, but to be honest, I'm that spoiled. I'm just taking the Thoughtsees. <laughs> I mean, 
in, yeah, because if that does, one does, random does. card is taken out of your deck for thirty dollars, that's usually fine. But day two of a GP that matters well, a lot more because you could lose because of that one card. Uh, but there's not much powerful in this pack. There's the Nylea's Emissary, the Nimbus Nyad, and um, the Marauder, which I don't think I want to first pick any of those cards. Well, you can, um, in this pack, you can easily uh, take the Thought Caesar, I guess. Um, the Uncommons are fine, they are quite okay, uh, but nothing which leads me to a, really a color I, I'd like to have. So... For me, it's the decision between Ray of uh, Dissolution, I guess, was the name? Yes, Ray of Dissolution, the uh, enchantment and destructor that gains you two life, three life. And, and um, the Thought Piece, and I'm that spoiled and I'm taking the Thought Piece in, uh, in the pack. Because it's just uh, 30 bucks, and I just don't own one of them. So <laughs> I uh, I do not own a Thought Seize either. Um, one of the main reasons that I am not playing anything good in Modern, uh, it's just too expensive. Um, modern yeah. Masters didn't drop prices too much. We will get back to a post-Modern Masters show in a bit, but. guess there's not much to say about that crack pack, oh. so we should get into our main topic, shouldn't we? We shouldn't just yeah. take more time to stall, although I'm very good at that. <laughs> um, so, I went to a pre-release, Okay. and you went to a pre-release, which um, yeah. I think you want to talk about the release and not the pre-release, because you go 03, 04, you take actually, pre-release. Actually, uh, the pre-release was about six rounds, um, and uh, at the end, um, I even gave up to one match uh, and just said, come on, you just won it. I don't want to play anymore uh, because uh, I thought I ha- didn't have to play the last round uh, then and do not have to drop um, the event and, and just getting my buy. But uh, a random guy uh, dropped, so I had to play the last round. Um, uh, and, I, and I went um, officially to four, and none of officially because we played out the the, the one match uh, three three with a really crappy pool with uh, one removal um, and uh, no bounce, nothing. Ouch. Yeah. Oh. Um, I went to a pre-release. Um, I 4-0'd. I did not lose a game. My game win percentage was 100 at the end of the day. Nice. Uh, I tried to take a picture of it, but the camera that I had with me uh, didn't take a picture of it real well. So you just right. have to trust me on that. Um, my deck was insane. Even when I drew terribly, it was still insane. <clears throat> yeah, it, it remembers me on the released... Uh, on uh, Saturday uh, was nice. E- even even on the color screw and um, two mana on the uh, draw, I managed to uh, k- bring my opponent down to th- uh, to three life before he killed me. Wow. It was nice, uh, the deck. All right, so do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? Go, uh, just, uh, I'm your guest, so go first. <laughs> All right. All right, so I played white-green, as I've said many times. So, seven forests, 11 planes, that's right, 18 lands. Uh, wh- what do you think about 18 lands in the format? Well, it's not uncommon to be to be honest. I played seventeen lands plus uh, Traveler's Amulet. That's fine. Um, that's essentially eighteen lands. I agree. Yeah. But I wanted to have my uh, my uh, third color splash fixed, so it's nice to have the amulet. Indeed. All right. So we'll start with the green cards. 
Leaf Crown Dryad for one and a green. It's a 2 2 with reach. Bestow for three and a green. Nessie and Corsair, three mana, three three. Can't complain about that, can you? Cent centaurs uh, are always nice. Exactly. Feral Invocation, two and a green, two two. Uh, enchantment Aura. Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two, and has Flash. I got two of those, but I was thinking that it would be something that I wanted to play. Um, both of them, but I decided not to, and at the end of the day, I decided I should have played both of them. Staunch Hearted Warrior, 4 mana 2-2 two, two with Heroic. Whenever you cast a spell that targets it, put 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And then uh, Nemesis of Mortals, 4 green green, 5-5. Five, five. It costs 1 less to cast for each creature in your graveyard. And uh, it has Monstrosity for 7 green green, and it's Monstrosity 5. And that costs one less for each creature in your graveyard. Then Nylea's Emissary. Oh, I don't have these sorted by converted mana cost. Oops. Nylea's Emissary. Uh, three and a green, three, three. Trample gives, and it bestows for five and a green. And then for the green rares, we have Mistcutter Hydra for X and a green. It's a, um, well, whatever you paid for X. And then it can't be countered. It has Pro Blue and Haste. Sylvan Carotid, so that's a 2 mana, 0, 3 Defender Hexproof, and it taps to add 1 mana of any color to your mana pool. So what do you the think of the greens? The Hydra can steal games. It's, Indeed. It's really an awesome card, um, and a really, really nice card. Uh, but uh, it's a rare, and you can never, uh, you can't play around rares in, uh, in a limited format. Right. Completely agree with you there. <clears throat> All right, so um, very, very solid green, to be honest. I have to say the the Birds of Paradise variant was insane the entire day. By far one of the best cards in the deck, just curving the it faster than the opponent. The dried, the O3 dried, the O3 plant. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's such a nice card. Indeed, it is. I'm a huge fan of the card. Yeah. Uh, all right. Next for the white, we have the favorite hoplite for a white. It's a one-two with heroic and uh, just the basic heroic. It puts a plus one plus one counter on it. Hopeful Edelon. It's a one mana one one with lifelink and it bestows for three and a white. That guy is surprisingly insane. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's, it's such a great card. Even if you played with as a one one uh, with lifelink uh, and. Uh, uh, bestow another creature on it. It's really, really good. Really good card. Um, that that saved me games against the one aggro deck that I faced. Bestow yep. that on a one one two two whatever, and that'll just win you the game. All right. So moving into white, uh, I obviously played the Celestial Archon, the pre-release promo. If you didn't, you were wrong. I played, I got a Heliod, God of the Sun, three and a white, five, six, indestructible, and uh, it's not a creature if your white is less than five, and other creatures have vigilance. Two white, white, put a two, one cat creature enchantment onto the battlefield. Well, I um, didn't have the pleasure to open a mythic. <laughs> I did not cast Heliod the entire pre-release. So I don't know what to say about him. I'm sure he's a good magic card. I don't know how good. He's going to uh, take over the game slowly. Even if he doesn't have that impact right now, he's hitting the board um, like the others. Uh, but he's going to take control of the complete uh, uh, situation. Well, my over white does get better. Um, I have a fabled hero for one white white. It's a two two double striker with heroic to put a plus one plus one counter on him. Then uh, that's really good. Then the Leonin Snarecaster for one and a white. It's a two one when it in, when it enters the battlefield, tap target creature. Yeah, nice card. <clears throat> what 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 to say about it? It's a it's a it's a sh better shortcut. <laughs> exactly, indeed. Uh, traveling philosopher, one and a white for a two two. A bear, and I'm not a, f a fan of a bear. I mean, it's fine. Wingsteed rider, 
one white white for a 2-2 two, two flying heroic. Whenever you cast a spell that targets it, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. So it's just the basic heroic. Um, no, but a good, good a solid flyer. Exactly. It's a solid card, which is fine. <clears throat> uh, Gift of Immortality. Uh, this card seemed really good, but I understand why some people think it's terrible. Um, well, I guess in limited form, it's like, uh, slow it's limited. It's not great. It's just... Yeah. In limited slow form, it's uh, like seal. It can be a thing, but I don't think it's such a good card. I mean, it, it seems fine. Uh, next we have an Ampharas Warden, three and a white, one, two, tap, tap target creature with power three or less. This card was insane the whole weekend. Okay. Uh, the whole day, excuse me. Yes, that was totally a GP I went to. No. If this deck wasn't a GP, I probably could have top aided. <laughs> this is how insane the deck was. Uh, Divine Verdict, three and a white, instant, destroy target, attacking or blocking creature. It does not have the good old flavor text of guilty, unfortunately. What's the flavor text now? <laughs> uh, the last thing to go through the Cyclops mind with a 12-ton brick of marble. Well, it, uh, it, 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 it's, uh, it, it fits the picture. Indeed, it does. Um, but the last three cards in my deck that I've been strategically holding from you, I had three Heliod's Emissaries. So these are four mana, three threes. Whenever it attacks or the enchanted creature attacks, tap target creature the opponent controls, and it bestows for seven. This card won me, I would have to say, at least half of the games that I played. It was insane. This card, every time I landed it, they had to deal with it. They, and if they couldn't deal with it, they lost the game on the spot. It was insane. Did you play it uh, as a 4-mana 3-3? Three, three? Or most of the time uh, as a beast? Most of the time I cast it. As a four mana three three, uh, the one or two times that I cast it with bestow, it was just insane. Okay. Um, yep. <clears throat> but this deck was insane. Uh, the first round, I played against uh, somebody that I know well. He's not the greatest Magic player. He's really good at constructed, but he's not <clears throat> a limited player, so he's playing a bunch of terrible cards. Um. And that was super easy. Let me just pull up the Planeswalker points so I remember which rounds were which. The next round I played against a really uh, really good friend of mine, big EDH player, uh, very good limited player, very good constructed player. Game one, uh, just attritioned him out the entire game. I was casting more spells than he was. Uh, he drew fine. He only had seven lands at the end of the game, and I had nine. But my cards were just more powerful than his. And then in okay. game two, he mulliganed to five and got stuck on one land. Mm, that's not good. So uh, he got his second land, and uh, I won. Next round, uh, <laughs> this, the the guy who I won next round, a uh, very, very good friend of mine, as I've said with a lot of these people. Odd, isn't it? Um, he well, plays, if plays it's Ragnos. Low, if it's your local store, you know the uh, uh, yes. guys you're playing, so it's it's okay to to call them friends. <laughs> uh, this guy always plays Rakdos. At the M13 pre-release, he played Rakdos, and I did not play against him. Oh, no, I did. We got a draw. We went to time and got a draw. The Return to Ravnica pre-release, he played Rakdos, and I lost to him. The Dragon's Maze pre-release, he played Rakdos, and I slaughtered him. The M14 pre-release, he played Rakdos, and I slaughtered him. <laughs> and the, uh, the Theros pre-release, he played Rakdos, and put up an extremely good fight. Uh, e each of the two games was very intense. I don't know how I won either of them. 
Um, well, the first game I got out that one mana, the Hope Light, Hopeful Edelon. I just bestowed that thing and I won. Um, Naturally, every time I bestowed the the, the Eidolon, I I also got it in my pool. Um, he, um, you win if he doesn't answer the the the, the card. Right, he bes uh, what would that be? He active treason my guy that was uh, bestowed, and that definitely harmed me, but not significantly. And I was able to uh, win on the backswing because of that Hydra. Make his yep. man a, a six a six six Hydra. Uh, that's a way to win a game of Magic, right? Yep. Uh, let's see or, what, what or else. adjust the fourteen fourteen life link. Round three. Uh, I played against a guy I'd never seen in the store before. So I don't know if he's good or bad. He was also playing white green. He had the Watch Wolf variant of the set that he landed turn two in both games. Okay. So it was tough at the beginning, I guess. It was very tough. Um, but I was able to just overpower him with creatures, and he would, the turn before the last turn of the game, he would sit there, and he would think for five, six, seven minutes. Okay. Um, I really, if this wasn't a pre-release, I would have called the judge on him <laughs> Oh play. That's how slow he was. Okay. Okay, um, uh, yeah, sometimes... This play I slowly got through that. Um, I made a very bad attack. And in the first game, but I held back my 2-2 two -two with double strike to chump block just in case something terrible happened. That something terrible happened, I chump blocked and I won next turn. Okay. So, my opponent, he played that four-mana bird, five-mana bird we were talking about. Mm -hmm. and was it a pain in the ass, or could you control the bird? Um, it hit me for 12 damage. Okay. So, it, it was a pain. If he didn't have that, this game would have been super easy. That's unfortunate, because I don't think the bird is that great. I I, I never uh, seen him play against me. I only got hit by uh, time-spiraling mythics in the air. And such things. So the bird isn't that great. Right. I, I I prefer I prefer the, the the three mana two two flying with heroic. I would agree. <clears throat> Anytime. All right. So, um, do you want to talk about your pre uh, release experience? Well, I could uh, do that if you want to. <laughs> Um, I also played uh, Green White, but added a little twist um, to it and splashed for uh, one single black card. And uh, this black card, it wa uh, was the, uh, let me get the English name of it. Um, I only got it in German right in front of me. Uh, Ferrikas Mander. Is the uh, is the is a, a golden green black card um, that when comes into play uh, returns a enchantment or creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So basically a grave digger, um, but uh, with a bigger body, four three, and one more mana cost. And this card is so awesome. It can get you back your bombs, it can back, get back your enchantments, uh, your flash enchantments you talked about. Um, it's just such a good card. 
and um, I splashed it with only one uh, swamp. Um, I could do that because I had the amulet and the ordeal of uh, Nalia. Um, so it was an easy splash and uh, really, really easy to, to, to accomplish. Only had to mulligan once uh, because of, of the swamp in my starting hand, but uh, it was okay. <laughs> So um, that, wa that was basically my splash, and uh, the rest of the deck, uh, it, it looks uh, similar to your deck. Um, I opened uh, the Archon 2 because I was uh, white, um, the Eidolon, the Hopelite, you, you talked about um, the, the, the Fabled Hero I also got in my pool, uh, awesome card. The Divine Verdict, um, enormous removal, and my only hard removal, if you can call it like that. Um, and uh, then one one card which really, 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 really impressed me was uh, the Phalanx Leader. It's uh, two, ma uh, two, ma two white, white, uh, no, white, white, one, one, heroic, um, whenever... Uh, 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 it it becomes the target. Put a plus one plus one counter on each of your creatures, not only himself, on each creature. Um, so it was really really awesome and pumped all my guys out there. Um, got some really really aggro starts with uh, turn one um, a hope with turn two phalanx uh, leader uh, into. Um, Chronist, uh, how is the name? Uh, Chronicler? Chronicler of Heroes, um, and my opponent uh, just uh, looked at the table and couldn't believe it, to be honest. Um, <clears throat> uh, got, my, uh, got an array of dissolution. Uh, we talked about the removal earlier um, in my white uh, package. And um, one uh, cool, cool, a uh, rare card is uh, the hundred one, handed one, uh, three, uh, four mana, uh, three five vigilance. Uh, when it becomes monstrous, it gains reach <coughs> and can block additional ninety nine creatures. <laughs> Insane guy. I really like that. I like the flavor <laughs> of that. Insane guy. He's just insane. <clears throat> And added uh, two two combat tricks in white. Um, one is uh, was uh, God's willing. Uh, target creature gains protection um, from uh, target creature your control gains protection from the color of your choice with uh, cry one. Um, actually, I misread the card again uh, at the the uh, release because I thought um, I can play it on my opponent's creatures too to get rid of an enchantment or something like that. But unfortunately, they are not printing uh, such combat tricks uh, like gain protection of a color, and you can put it on, play it on, uh, on the, the creatures of your opponents anymore, unfortunately. I only, always liked it. And um, the, the second uh, combat trick in white was um, uh, Battle Vice Vader, uh, target creature against plus two plus two with uh, Scry one. Um, actually, I triggered very often uh, the heroic effects of my creatures, <coughs> of my white creatures. My Phalanx uh, leader was awesome. Um, he was my preferred target to trigger. Um, it was insane. Uh, one game I had, I, I guess, uh, uh, five uh, plus one plus one counters on um, uh, a three three uh, on on a, on the chronicler. So it was basically an eight eight creature for three mana. It's insane. Um, the green part of my deck was uh, for the fixing uh, the ordeal of Nylea. I le really like the complete ordeal set. Um, it's just a great card. Uh, the Nalia one uh, fixes you. Uh, 
really, really nice. Um, got some combinations uh, with my uh, with my phalanx leader or other heroic creatures that, that I got um, to trigger uh, earlier <coughs> to um, push me through uh, some drops. Um, it was really, really great. Um, got the Nassian uh, cursor like you too. Um, yep, that card is insane. It's it's just basically a good card. It's a solid three mana three three card. <clears throat> and um, also got the nemesis of the uh, mortals. <laughs> This card won me won me one game. I can uh, if I remember that right. I was stuck on two lands. Um, had to discard uh, cards because didn't draw draw them. Uh, discarded two um, two two creatures and played the nemesis on uh, turn four after that uh, with four manas uh, uh, on the the yeah. As I drew the two minus, I instantly cast it, cast it the, the nemesis, and uh, he changed uh, the complete game. I won that game on a mulligan to six and a, a screw on two manas. Insane. Um, you uh, you mentioned the uh, uh, Pharaoh invocations. I got two of them. I played them and they were awesome. Combat trick, enchantment, everything. Removal, everything. <laughs> Yay, removal. I ha I have to say it. It was awesome. Um, if I had the um, fabled hero uh, attacked with it uh, on turn four, cast it per uh, with an instant uh, the. Feral invocation uh, got a ten life on turn four from my opponent's uh, life total. Insane, insane. Indeed. Um, another uh, hard removal I have to say is uh, uh, at the converted mana cost of three in green is um, time to feed. One of my personal um, favorite cards right now in the set. Um, time to feed is uh, let me get the card right in English because I have it right in German in front of me. Um, choose target creature and open and controls. When that creature dies this turn, you gain three life. Target creature you control fight, fights that creature. Um, so you can um, you choose a creature from your opponent and you can also trigger your heroic with uh, time to feed to strengthen your own creatures and kill another creature you don't want to get rid of and gain free life so it's basically uh, um, yeah three wishes in one card <laughs> I, I know it sounds silly and funny but uh, you get rid of a card you don't want you gain free life and you strengthen you, you maybe strengthen your own creatures for, for the cost of three manas and uh, uh, one card. Insane. <clears throat> um, also, one of my favorite cards in green is uh, the Nessian uh, Asp. I guess. Yes? Yeah, Nessian Asp. Um, insane. Blocker five four reach for five mana, exactly the body you want to have in the set. It's exactly the body. Um, it can block every nearly every flyer um, you have to deal with, um, except the archon and maybe a creature bestowed on the archon. But I'm just talking about uh, uh, normal creatures. Um, so it blocks everything you want to. Uh, it needs to block, in including mythic areas, uh, and uh, can easily be uh, become a really, really big threat if it gets monstrous. Um, uh, as an eight, uh, eight, nine, uh, reach creature. Um, 
Another card I opened was the Centaur uh, Battlemaster uh, in the Uncommon. Uh, three, uh, four, five mana, um, three, three heroic. Uh, whenever uh, it, it becomes a target, it gains three plus one plus one counters. Um, actually, I pumped that guy uh, to 14, 14 lifelink. And uh, wow, when you when you're facing a fourteen fourteen lifelink, um, I guess uh, there's not much to get you can do in in the set. You you have uh, some hard removal, but you have to find it, and uh, it, it it chunks uh, really really much life from your opponent. Or he has to jump block, and uh, if he jump blocks, you gain the still the life. Um, the nemesis was uh, fourteen fourteen once two uh, in my in, in my uh, games. <coughs> Played it uh, uh, and uh, pumped it with the ordeal um, to an eight eight, and then made it monstrous, and then uh, played the Avalon on it. So I I got the fourteen fourteen creatures with uh, fourteen fourteen creature uh, lifelink with two different creatures. <laughs> Hilarious. Wow. Um, and uh, one combat trick I got in green was um, Savage Surge. Really, really nice uh, combat trick. I like it. Um, it's a reprint uh, from an earlier set, I guess. Ravnica? What's the card called? Savage Surge. Um, that's from Gate Crash, I believe. Yeah, Ravnica block was it, but it's a reprint, and it's here. It's very, very, very better, uh, much better because it's only common now, and um, you ha you ha you want to trigger some heroic uh, spells. Um, and one last car card I opened was a rare in green. Um, it was the Boon Zatur. <laughs> Yay. A friend of mine is playing that in standard at the SCG Open this weekend, so we'll see if it's any good. I like him. To be honest, um, I I played him uh, most of the time as a normal creature. I didn't uh, want to bestow him um, because the situation was always um, I want to get the full power onto the battlefield. Um, and not the enchantment on another creature or something like that. I wanted to, to keep uh, pressure uh, on my opponent and not to um, equip another creature, to be honest. And that that's, um, was my deck. It was really, really um, control-ish um, or, and aggro-ish in, 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 in one spot. Uh, I was I could switch from uh, control to aggro in like one turn and it was insane. Um, played against a red white aggro deck he um, in the finals uh, and he uh, nearly killed me twice uh, and then I drew the lifelink guy and uh, the board was still uh, stalled at the moment but I, I drew the lifelink guy and uh, game was over um, it was just insane there was only one card I, I really 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 missed uh, to play and that was let me get it right I don't want to uh, make your US uh, wrong card. Staunch Hearted Warriors. I like them really, really much. It's common. It's from mana to two. When it, uh, it has heroic, when it uh, becomes a target, put two plus one plus one taunt counters on it. I got the uncommon uh, elk, but I rather play uh, one mana uh, efficient uh, card. Then I, I agree with that. Centaur, not the elk. It's not a like elk. It's in centaur. But um, I like the the four mana guy more than the three mana, uh, five mana guy. Um, and I rather play the four mana guy than the five mana guy. And if I could make uh, the swap uh, uh, to get a, give away an uncommon and in common, I would really really love this deck. 
It it would make it so much better. But enough of my deck. It was just an amazing op uh, weekend. I fought out uh, with the deck and uh, had a lot of fun playing it. Soul crush my opponent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, um, imagine you're facing an army of uh, lethal creature, lethal creature, and lethal creature, and you you just drew a draw, yeah, uh, a bear, yeah. <laughs> and 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 uh, with lethal, I mean, um, like uh, six. Pa I, I guess he was at eight life, and I, he was facing three lethal creatures. Wow, that's that's awesome. <clears throat> All right. Well, that was some good music. Well, I don't know what you heard yet, but you do, at least. We're back. Hi, hi. Hello? Jason? Sorry about that. I had to mute for a second. That will all oh, cut okay. out if you were silent instead. No... I wasn't silent. <laughs> exactly, I heard that. All right, so we are going to talk about Standard Popper. I know that's a format Ooh. that, um, as I said, we have to... Um, that we have to at least uh, not ignore as a thing that exists, right? And for, for me, I really have to pay attention. Again, top eight of the... Uh, Standard Popper event. Very excited about that. Congratulations. I told you to enter it, and you never entered it. I told well, several uh, people, just enter. I have never played Standard Popper before. I net decked this list. I spent 50 cents on the deck. And uh, I won a Rise of the Eldrazi Booster Door Prize, so I asked them for a door. And uh, they did not give me a door. They gave me a Rise Booster. I don't know, maybe we should open that and do a Rise Crack-A-Pack one day. Why not? Because the booster is worthless, and um, the Eldrazi are money. Well, I got them in real life. <laughs> <laughs> I did, and I sold them when they were three bucks each. I don't know how, how much they are. I've got a place at Emrakul's right next to me. Uh, well, yes, I, I don't. I sold my Emrakul for a buck fifty. Ooh, how dare you? I know. That was back when it was a buck fifty. I mean, it was like three or four or something. But yeah, well, why would, why would you ever uh, sell this card? I wanted to church? get a fat pack and not spend any money to prove something. Yeah, but... I had to prove a point to someone. And, uh, and the, and, I knew and the, the cards were going up. I knew very little. And the and the, and the point was uh, just to throw out money. No, I didn't know they were going up in price. I back then I was a oh look, booster packs opening. What else do you do with boosters? You know, a new player. And uh, yeah, that was very sad. <laughs> Very, very sad. Oh, man. Um, but, well, actually, a quick financial update. Um, I heard the folks at Brainstorm Brewery, uh, another magic podcast where they talk about finance, saying don't buy Shocklands. I just want okay. to say that they are a bunch of bumbling idiots for saying that. I think they want to get their shock lands at cheap prices and then sell them back at high prices. Don't buy shock lands is the stupidest thing I have heard. Maybe. Maybe real. I don't need to buy them. I got them already. But um, uh, but um, you, I'm getting as many as I can. Yeah. Uh, I would uh, try to really get them at uh, at a low price. Sure, why not? Um, they were free. <clears throat> I got as many as I could. 
Yeah, why not? You, you, if you have them, you're not gonna sell them again because um, you want to keep them. In every deck you you're gonna play, uh, you, you're gonna use them. I'm telling you. It doesn't matter uh, which deck. It doesn't matter. Um, uh, you want to uh, to keep them. Exactly. Um, all right. So we were going to talk about some standard popper. What are you playing sure. with in standard popper? Well, I I guess I have uh, like two uh, ideas right now in my mind uh, going through my mind. The the first idea, um, which is uh, really. Uh, which I prefer the most is uh, like a black blue, a uh, crush black blue, uh, black white, um, extort, uh, theme deck. Um, you will, with Theros, you add, uh, you get some really nice cards, uh, with, uh, extort, uh, abilities, which are not really extort abilities, but drain your opponent's life away. There's the uh, five uh, four mana three three guy with uh, devotion uh, on black uh, who drains uh, your opponent directly. There's the three mana one four uh, white guy uh, who drains your opponent for one life for I guess uh, one black to colorless uh, as m much as you want to. Um, so. Every card you draw after the uh, this card is is uh, is uh, extort one um, even lands just play your land extort one go uh, but you don't have to do it in your turn um, you also got the uh, um, tithe drinker from uh, dragon's maze you got the um, uh, kingpin's pet from uh, Rick Gate crash, gate crash, right? Gate crash. Um, uh, you got the extort guys from uh, Gate Crash uh, Commons. Uh, what were uh, uh, the Syndic of Tithe? Um, the Enforcer, I guess, is is extort two. Syndic Enforcer. Yes, Syndic uh, Enforcer. Um, just uh, just a quick find for. Uh, Extort. Um, there are some cards you want to play, and you play um, white and black. And white and black are always uh, the, the the colors with removal. So um, you got got some tools, um, and that's that's the uh, one deck I'm thinking about. And the next, uh, Basilica creatures, Basilica creatures. Uh, um, which card to I have? Hmm. Yeah, Basilica Creatures was was the, the the flyer I forgot. Um, and the next deck I'm thinking about is uh, building about a uh, Feral Invocation, the new uh, plus two plus two Flash Enchantment, and um, maybe Hexproof um, guys or. Uh, just green puts the make your guys bigger uh, opponent that opponents don't want to can't remove them or can't help them and with one of my uh, 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 favorite cards from uh, the set uh, or most uh, Thero's favorite cards um, uh, feed, uh, feed the hunt and uh, feed, feed, and the, feed the feed pack feed the pack, pack is a rare Time to feed, sorry. Time, Time to, feed. to feed, okay. Um, and uh, the uh, human I was talking about um, when he come, becomes the target, plus uh, two plus one plus one conquers in green. Uh, maybe something in this direction. That's, that's what's going to my mind right now. And But I don't have the cards in a paper form uh, in front of me, so I can build in right now. <laughs> That's unfortunate. I don't know. Um, maybe I'm just com uh, just a, a stupid idiot and then don't know what to think of. Well, that, about. that's actually the most likely thing. Yeah, yeah. The random German guy who doesn't know 
who, what's he about? He's what I don't know, blah, 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 uh, what he's talking about. Exactly. Exactly. But you've made a lot of sense this episode, and um, really, I don't know. Not not to not to wrap up the show because we are far from done. But um, <laughs> really, like to thank you. No uh, problem. Being on the show, and I'm sure the you're welcome. The listeners would like to thank you too, although I can't speak for them. Well, uh, I think uh, they will. Uh, they will say, "Blah, what a dork, what a jerk." <laughs> well, aren't all magic players dorks? I mean, really? <laughs> we are all dorks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know what 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 the environment in Stand Opera is gonna be or uh, not. Um, I I just like playing cool cards and and stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Um. So a little bit of uh, I guess we'll go back on to that finance tangent. Okay. Um. You wanted to talk about the new Guild Gates. Yes, I'm gonna be that guy. <sighs> well, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Well, what, what should I talk about them? Um, they are a Guild Gates 2.0. Um, yep. And you are saying that they are going to be seven U.S. dollars. Well, I think it's a, it's a price they they are gonna be. Um, in German, uh, I, I that would be evaluate your uh, uh, you, you know four, five four to five euros. I evaluate them. Um, I don't know if they're going up uh, at the, uh, in, the mom- in the current state they are at 2.5 euros so four dollars five to, to five dollars I guess yes um, um, yep. I don't know the, the correct uh, conversion uh, correct right now, but conversion rate you're you're about right there with four to five yeah. US uh, <clears throat> dollars so I, I don't think there is a Huge uh, step uh, 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 in in the the market, but um, I think some people gonna realize um, that they are gonna be good, but but um, they are rare, and um, you always now, they could be an uncommon cycle of duels, and nobody would notice. I mean, they're yeah. just not good magic cards by any stretch of well, the Well, you history. you play you you actually play guild gates in. Uh, Standard decks, or in some standard there decks, are, uh, there are a few standard decks. Yeah, uh, I'm thinking about the red green, uh, 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 red green, uh, the green black uh, controlish deck. Uh, but it really does need swamps for that mutilate. Um, yeah, actually, just sure. more skill intensive swamps because you but, don't play but, with them sometimes. But to be honest. Um, if you play uh, Guildgate um, or you play the, the, the Skryland, you you have the, the Skryland um, uh, to look at your next card. So <clears throat> I think uh, they're gonna see some play, but not very much. And because they are uh, very rare, well, they are rare. Um, there's about five dollars uh five to seven dollars i guess i mean be. i'm looking post return to ravnica rotates out rotation if there's no mana fixing they might be seven or eight dollars yeah. but i really think they're going down to like a buck fifty two bucks <clears throat> okay um to be honest, hands, folks that's what i'm saying t- to be honest i'm willing to put that uh on, on a bet and i'm not gonna uh Buy my lands right now, and I'm waiting. Um, All right, I'm gonna bet a uh, Memnite on it. How's that? Okay, just give me your uh, address. I'm uh, I'll send them. No, uh, uh, no, a magic on. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I don't need creepy German stalkers. Well, they are English. I always order my cards in English, if I'm uh, if I can order them. Um, no, to be honest, um, I'm willing to trust you with this. I don't have, uh, I'm, I'm not a speculation guy. I am um, a very, very speculative uh, magic player. Okay, well, what do you think about Steam Order? Or, or, or Steam think agree, it's garbage. <clears throat> yeah, okay, good. Do you agree, disagree? 
think I'm an idiot I, because you probably uh, should think I'm an idiot. I played it in limited, to be honest. <laughs> played it in limited. All right. Yeah. Remember my blue black deck uh, from the release uh, from the free release? It splashed red for uh, 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 the sh- the guy who you can sack for damage and for the steam augury. And honestly, it was garbage. Because it it, it it always hits uh, uh, what 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 was the one hit uh, four lands one card yep guess what I got four lands one card what a dagger um uh, so I don't I don't like it you I give your you give your you give your opponent too much uh. uh choice uh, here too much of a choice here because he can uh, decide what uh, what cards uh, you're gonna get so right that's not what i want to i mean and it leaves space open for when opponents are dumb um but the yeah. same thing happens with factor fiction itself and factor fiction is just strictly better yeah in my not so full opinion um, but but a fact of fiction is uh, that uh, your opponent uh, chooses to make the, the piles, and you can choose in right. weather situation. And I think uh, uh, factor fiction is strictly better. Yeah, definitely. This. I actually misread the card uh, at first. I, I thought it was a new prophetic bolt, um, and thought it was really good. Well, you were wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, prophetic Bolt would be awesome. If Prophetic Bolt was in standard right now... It would be awesome. It would be awesome. Yeah. Um, okay, let's talk about some other rares uh, you like. Uh, I don't know the gods. Uh, I think they're uh, overpriced right now. Um, um, I think Furferos, Fafferos, that guy is uh, way overpriced. Um, what's the pri- what's the price in 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 the U.S. right now? Uh, that I do not know. Let me um, grab it up on uh, Star City. Okay, I'm just looking at the cards at uh, German. We have a. Tr- so let's see. SCG has P H U P H. Come on, let's not make me look like an idiot for the first time in the history of ever, because I look like an idiot pretty much every podcast. Um, do, 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 do. No, you're not. Oh, I may not be an idiot, but I look like one. There's a difference. Okay, in Germany you can get them for 14 euros. That means uh, 25 US dollar right now. Mythic rare. Um, Mythic fur feros is 30 US dollars at the moment. Okay, so it's... in, in German, it's uh, cheaper. Uh, yeah. 15 euros. Uh, I didn't know the Germans were known for being cheap. Tw- $20 right now. In Germany. Well, we are not cheap. Uh, but uh, we can send you pen- uh, tanks. Yes, yes. Uh, we've <laughs> experienced that in the past. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, uh, Stormbreath Dragon. Um, the new no, we're not talking about terrible cards. Come on. Well, um, guess the price in Germany. Two dollars, a buck fifty, <laughs> seventy-five cents. I mean, twenty-five U.S. dollars. Oh my God, you Germans are more weird than I thought you were. Yeah, to just just buy them in your uh, uh, at your He's local third. store for one. He's huh? 30 in uh, yeah. Star City, which is yeah. insanity. This card is a bad magic card. Well, I don't know if it's really that bad. Actually, um, Protector White is not so... 
Protection from white is one ability on the magic card. Yeah. I mean, it's not the entire card. Mm. Flying haste, so... I think Thassa is better than it is. Not necessarily as an investment, but as a magic card. Oh, I like Thassa. Scrying every upkeep for free. And I am nice. still scrying. Yep. There's going to be one person who gets that reference that's listening, and if you do, send us an email. There's another reference that nobody's going to get except for that one person listening. What do you, th do you think of Ashok? But when you know. think about it, one out of the three people who listen, I mean, hey, that's pretty good odds. Um, Ashiok Nightmare Weaver, I think she's yes. insane, but not $20 insane. Yeah, I think uh, she's uh, really cool, too. Um, I like the first ability, to be honest. Uh, milling opponents uh, is nice. In I always, I, I always uh, love the crazy uh, decks. Uh, um, played uh, in standard ones, uh, the... Hawk, um, Mill, uh, Holding Mine deck. Nice. <laughs> yep. I would have loved Ashiok in that deck. Okay, it was white because I had to have Ross and had to fuck, but uh, could also add black. <laughs> Forties is a uh, card, we know that. Okay. Um. Xenagos, the Reveler. Xenagos is garbage. I, I just have to put it out there. Yeah. He has to, he fights uh, in, in standard with Domri Raid uh, at the spot. Yeah, Domri Raid and, is... And, I, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say strictly better. <laughs> yes, I do think so, too. I mean, Domri Ra, uh, Raid, Rod A, whatever, that guy... That guy, that's his new name. That guy <clears throat> is insane. Uh, very good magic card in general, and also it's very well positioned in the format. It sees modern, legacy, etc. play. It sees all of the play, as it's called. Okay, and one card I'd like to talk about is uh, Swan Song. Um, I don't think it's that great, but I'm sure it is great. It is great. All right, explain yourself. No, don't uh, think uh, too narrow. Don't think of standard. It's stand I'm, it's, it's standard environment. It's not that great. But um, you think it's going to see play in legacy, modern, vintage, legacy, other formats? Yeah, counter your force of will for one blue, or. Uh, counter... So, like, people are just force of willing that force of will, though. Yeah. Uh, or, um... Uh, I don't know. In modern, um... Sca uh, scape shift. Or something like that. Oh, cool. Get your bird. I really like uh, Swan Song in modern. I think it's gonna be a, a bit worth uh, over... Uh, five dollars. I think it's gonna be five dollars. Really? Yeah, I think it's gonna be uh, going up. Really? I'm, yeah. I'm. I, I, I do think it's gonna be five bucks, but I think it'll be worth some non-zero amount of currency. No, it, I, I think it's gonna be. Uh, it's gonna see play in modern, in legacy, in extended. Uh, I do extended. think so. Extended, really? Now. Ex maybe. Extended is a dead format. Well, okay. <laughs> they actually killed Extended earlier this year. No. Yeah. They took it. They sent it. They threw a knife through it. They killed Extended. <laughs> <laughs> the, they actually discontinued it, so you cannot play F uh, M Extended, and there will be no GPs mod. In yeah, but all but, um, the Extended tournaments that were going on the past few years, you remember? They were all some. events. I mean, yeah. <laughs> no, um, I think Swan Song is one uh, one card in the set um, that's gonna go up. Really? Uh, All right. Yeah. I will. Uh, I, I be able to make a bet that it will not, but um, I think it's gonna uh, see some play. We will in 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 modern, and I think it's gonna be five bucks more uh, plus a card. 
It's possible. And uh, when it rotates out of standard, um, it's going to be, uh, it's going up more, I think. When it rotates because out, it could go up because there's no availability of the card. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like the fetch lands. Oh, my God, the fetch lands. I can't even bring them up without cringing of how stupid <laughs> I was. <sighs> fetch land. Yep, you can go and you can fetch a land. Yeah. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> uh, well, this is, um, this was a podcast five minutes ago. Now it's just <laughs> two people talking nonsense and getting angry at this speculation. So, uh, I think... And talking Jupiter, about fetch land. I know, you can fetch a land. Who would have thought? And you know, you can trigger a landfall twice. Oh my god, that is why they're so expensive. Absolutely. So the landfall, <laughs> all of those landfall decks making their way in Legacy. You have not seen a landfall deck in Legacy in forever, but that is what's making the cards go so far up in price. You got it. All right, so let's go okay. to uh, contact information. How can people contact you if they want to? Well, they contact, can contact me over Skype. Um, it's just uh, easy to find me. Um, Melt, Alar, like the, uh, the bird in World of Warcraft. Um, one, two, three, four. Or they, uh, they contact, can contact you and you can give my Skype address. Exactly. They can contact me. Now, how can people contact me? I bet you don't know that, do you? Well, I guess over the podcast facts. Uh, or something like that. <laughs> they can contact me through a variety of ways. You can get to, well, you can contact the show, which will be me and whomever the new co-host is, um, on Twitter, at jam underscore podcast one. You can contact me directly on Twitter, Modern Master J. Um, you can contact... Guess what? I, I even have a Twitter account. You do? What is it? I, I, I just remembered. I, I made it, uh, like, uh, five months ago. Right? What is that account? Um, well, let me guess. I don't have it. Uh, I'm uh, just logging in. Or email. You can contact me. I am do to do to do another magic podcast at gmail.com. I bet you could have guessed that. No? Nope. nope. <laughs> All right. Um, what else? How would... Um, method of contacting. Do you have any ideas of ways people can contact me and creep on me? Because that's what people do. Because they all hate Well, me. Twitch? Ah, uh, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Twitch.tv slash just another magic podcast. I am getting a Skype message from you. Oh, at Joerg Twy Sparkle. Okay, you have to explain what the Twy Sparkle is. <laughs> well, uh, I, I I do like some ponies. Okay, maybe to be honest. be coming back on the show any mm -hmm. soon. All right. Well, thank you very much for being here. No problem. You're jerk. Altalar, whoever you are. <laughs> Just call me the random jerk guy from Germany. The random jerk from Germany. You should have made yeah. at jerk from Germany. It, it, well, that's possible. I could do that. All right, so he will be at jerk from Germany <laughs> on Twitter. That will be Maybe. show notes. Um, he's Meltalar on Twitch. He's always sitting in Michael Jacobs' stream. Attempt or your stream? Yes, he does sit in my stream a lot, which I should be streaming right now, but shows holding me from doing that. And uh, on 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 Magic Online, I'm uh, Metalar too. Could you believe that? Oh, Magic Online, yeah. Jason the Mind Sculptor is my name, and you can get on the uh, the People's Draft Clan on there. That is the clan that I run. A uh, buddy of mine, <laughs> Lawyer78 on Twitch, wanted me to make a clan for him, so I said, sure. Uh, the clan's pretty awesome. It's a bunch of random people from the interwebs, believe it or not. I believe it. And you're in there, so you're definitely one of those random people from the interwebs. 
All right, so thank you all very much for listening, and uh, don't play Theros Draft. It's terrible. I like it. Eh, you're wrong. (laughs) Well, we will see, we will see. We will see. I think it's the next Avacyn Restored, which was the best draft format in history. (laughs) I never drafted it. That's how bad it was. I mean, I drafted Innistrad like three times. All right. Well, I, oh, continue. No, 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 everything okay. I just wanted to add, uh, I, I liked Everson's Restart very much. All right. In that case, we're going to have to cut off this show and uh, <laughs> see what this guy is smoking. So thank you all very much for listening. We'll be back next week.